Hi everybody, welcome to Simpler Living PEI and today it is all about the food. It is some me time when I need to relax. Yes, I like to cook. So today we actually made a custard pie and a pumpkin pasta bake. Sounds a little bit more difficult than it looks, but it's actually pretty easy. Full butter crust because if you're going to make pie, you're going for the butter, just so you know. Now I use a French rolling pin. You cannot gauge just how thick your pastry is with a French rolling pin, but handy dandy pie plate. If all else fails, measure, right? Now you're going to notice too when I put this crust in the pan, I'm making it taller because I kind of think I already knew I was going to make too much custard for this pie and it turned out I was right. So deep dish custard pie, that's how it came out. And by the way, the crust Spot on perfect. Now the custard, as you notice, my eggs are all different sizes. We actually get the eggs from a farm. So it's six eggs, two cups of milk, one cup of sugar, seems like a lot, some vanilla and some nutmeg. Not so bad. Now you'll notice my sugar does look like it's a different color, but my sugar is actually an organic cane sugar, so there's still a tiny bit of molasses in it. So I do use white sugar, but mostly just for the hummingbirds and for the coffee. So there you go. Now when you're making a custard for a custard pie though, normally you would use like 2% or homogenized milk. So I actually had to add a half a cup of whipping cream because we use 1% milk for pretty much everything. So, you know, hey. It happens. It did make the pie a little bit waterier, which was unfortunate, but it still tasted really, really good. So you're going to see me lift up and hold up the nutmeg bag. Yes, nutmeg, but of course I forgot I was going to speed this video up, so you couldn't have read it anyway. So yeah, it's nutmeg. I think I might put more nutmeg in or maybe use nutmeg and clove because it has a nice flavor, but I like it a little bit stronger. So now it is filling in the crust. Yep, see, I must have knew. <laughs> All right, let's get on with the pasta. Now it is a pumpkin pasta bake, but in our case, we're using ghost acorn squash. Need to use up the rest of the acorn squash from last year, actually, that we had them in the garden. So now I bake my acorn squash whole. That way all the moisture stays in, they don't dry out too bad, and these acorn squash has have a nice mellow pumpkin-y pumpkin flavor. Is that a word? Pumpkin-y? Either way, still tasted phenomenal. That big one, he was still pretty darn warm too when I was trying to get that flesh out. It did have a few stringy bits because it was a pretty big squash. So, squash is ready to go. Let's get on with dinner. Now, there was a whole section of this video, actually two sections of this video, I completely screwed up. I have no idea what I did. I must have just completely forgot to hit the record button for you so I could share. But in the frying pan, that is a sweet Italian sausage that comes from Crystal Green Farms here on the island. I get most of my meat from Crystal Green and Kathy. Fabulous farm. They take very good care of their animals and I have never had any problems with anything from her. I have also pre-cooked the pasta in here. Now, the second part that I also forgot to hit record was when I put the kale, the cream cheese in with the sausage after it was nicely browned. By the way, if you're going to cook meat, guys, brown your meat. Come on. <laughs> okay, yeah, I probably shouldn't say that, but if you're going to cook the meat, get the flavor out. That sausage, by the way, is extremely lean. I added no butter, added no oil, but it wasn't dry. It was very, very lean and it had a great flavor. So at this point, once it's brown, you add cream cheese, you add the kale, if you so choose, and you add the pumpkin. But that's the part, of course, that you're not going to see. Conveniently, also, you're also not going to see me sitting there with a pair of scissors cutting up most of the kale because I forgot to chop it up before I put it in the pan. So, you know, memory doesn't work. So if you're going to use kale, you're going to use spinach, you're going to use Swiss chard, 
chop it up first, make your life easy. Just checking on the pie in there. So now that came out, by the way, really, really creamy by the time we were done. I was very, very, very happy with the outcome. So right about now, I'm probably off getting the cream cheese off the, you know, going to get the kale, going to get the green peas, and getting everything to go into that frying pan that you're just not going to be able to see because it's me. You guys know me. <laughs> Alrighty, so now, guys, what we have got is a half-finished product. Check that out. The magic of movie making. So that was me taking the pie out of the oven, by the way. It came out and it looked fabulous. You'll see it here in a bit. So that's garlic, or sorry, onion salt. Now I make that onion salt myself. It's basically half dehydrated onions and half sea salt. Not a lot of salt. You really don't need a lot. There go the peas, using up that last little bit. Oh yeah, and that's me cutting up some of the kale that I missed with the scissors the first time. Trust me, you feel like an absolute fool, even though there's nobody else in your house, and you're cutting up kale with a pair of scissors in a frying pan. Uh, so the last of the Parmesan cheese in the fridge has gone in there now as well, and we're going to give it a really good stir up, and it came out so creamy, so tasty. Oh yeah, I must have missed some more kale. Oh well. A little bit more milk because I didn't want it a little bit creamier, and now let's get the pasta in there, and... It is almost dinner time. Now, I didn't put all the pasta in. I saved a little bit for Fred's lunch, by the way. You know, you never let anything go away. Some of the sausage went into his lunch, too. So, it tasted good. Oh, more kale. Go figure. <laughs> Alrighty, so now we've got the one glass dish. So, that's going to be for supper tonight. And now the tin dish is one of my the last few that I have left. And that's going to go into the freezer for later on. So a little bit too much in the glass dish, of course. One of the good things about cooking, you always make sure you have enough to get some in the freezer for a fabulous freezer meal as well. So we added some cheddar cheese to our finished product. So pumpkin pasta bake it is for supper and custard pie. Thanks for coming out, guys. Like and subscribe, Simpler Living PEI. Until next time, bye-bye.